ladies and gentlemen, please give a big Bristol welcome to Michael McIntyre! Favorite city of them all. It's Bristol! All right, my fathers! I met some locals today, including a man who came up to me and went, Oh my god, it's you! Gert Lush! What? Gert Lush! I think you've got me mixed up with some kind of Norwegian person. <laughs> He said, can I get a photo? Can I get a photo? Mr. McIntyre, very polite. Very polite. <laughs> can I get a photo, Mr. McIntyre? I said, yeah, yeah, OK. So I got in, because it was only him, you know, from one of those cuddly ones like that. And he went, no, 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 just of you. Quite creepy. <laughs> I said, I'm like this. <laughs> then he, he held up the camera. It was quite clearly, it was a digital camera, quite clearly the wrong way around. You could see in the display his own confused face. <laughs> And behind it, his actual confused face. Roy, let me see how this works then. <laughs> then he took it off his face with a flash, thanked me and walked off. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. That's Carter Jar. Carter Jar. <laughs> so look, um, I've spotted the wonderful Carol Vorderman sitting there. I could not say hi. Look at that. You're, you're, where are you from? Sorry? I've been in Bristol three years. You've been in Bristol for three years? You enjoying it, Carol? I love it. You love it. She loves it. She likes it. She's come down here. I actually met you once before. You probably don't remember this. I got in the lift with you, and believe it or not, you were standing at the numbers. And you said, what floor? I thought, if I can't make a joke in these circumstances, <laughs> I'm not a comedian. I'll have one from the top and four for anywhere else, please, Carol. <laughs> What an absolute pleasure to welcome Deborah Meaden, a dragon in the house! There's a dragon in the house! How are you, Deborah? Um, are, you, are you local, Deborah Meaden? Taunton. Taunton. Oh, that's not far at all, Taunton. So, <laughs> Sam, uh, you're one of my favourite dragons. I like it when you go, so let me tell you where I'm at. That's good. Let me, do, do you say that when you pick up your mobile? Is that what you mean? <laughs> I'm out. In fact, you should, have that, you should have that on your answer phone. You should have that on your answer phone. Hi, this is Deborah Meaden. Let me tell you where I'm at. I'm out. That'd be lovely. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I, I hate those answer phones where, where they have like an automated person and people just drop their name in the middle. You need to know. It sounds shit. <laughs> this is the phone to phone voicemail service for dive. Please leave your message on the phone. Change it. You think she's like that in her real life? This is my husband, Barry. He's an architect. <laughs> I have an iPhone, and uh, it's so easy to break. I just sort of put it down. It wasn't even a fall. It was just a little, uh, like that, uh, and it cracked the thing, and I had to take it to the Apple shop, where they have the most arrogant people I've ever met in my life. They have their names on the blue, blue shirts and their names. Underneath it says, genius. <laughs> You're not a genius. You work in a shop, OK? <laughs> I, I do quite like the idea of people who work in shops having a, an indicator of their level of intellect written on them. I think that could certainly help me out. So like in Curry's, P, can't read. At least I know that. <laughs> I like the PC adverts where they go, I'm a PC and this was my idea. Uh, and they've got, they've got the one for, um, when this is bloke, have you seen it? He's on his own on the internet. <laughs> And then his wife comes in, and there's this new feature where you can immediately hide what you're doing. And he was buying his wife an anniversary present. I'm a PC, and wank hide button was my idea. Obviously. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing my first guest. I've been so looking forward to introducing this man. You're going to absolutely love him. He's the next big thing. Please welcome the fantastic Mr. Sean Walsh is here! Hello, 
Hello to Bristol! I come from Brighton, small town, lots of cafes, a bit like Bristol, good for people watching. Do you like people watching? Yeah. Yes, this is what I like to do in my time. This, I, don't, I can't be bothered to do anything. People watching is brilliant. People watching is just sitting outside the cafe, having a sip of coffee and thinking, he looks like a dick. You don't get this everywhere else, you know. I go to London a lot. It's too, too hectic there. You don't get a chance to people watch in London. The only chance you get to people watch in London is when you go down the escalators to the underground. Right? But it's brilliant. It's like hardcore people watching. You just stand there going, dick, 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 dick. I would. I like airports. I don't mind airports, I like them better than train stations, because you've got the travelators. <laughs> you don't even have to bother walking. <laughs> but you still do. Because yeah, you get to do the power walk. <laughs> it's brilliant, I love it. I see the travel out, I'm gonna bloody have this. <laughs> Stop, forget the plane, we'll walk there, come on. <laughs> Who are the people that don't use them? You just speed past them, they're there going, I don't like fun. <laughs> what are you doing? And there's a warning now, this is true, this is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. There's a warning when you get towards the end of the travelator. It's ridiculous, you get towards the end and it's that woman, you know, the woman that's everywhere, the, you know, the cash in a mathor, please. <laughs> it's her, this time she's worried, she says, caution. Hey, right, what's going on here? What's... What's here? She says, you are now approaching the end. Thank God, I didn't think it was going to happen like this. <laughs> and the conveyor, the caution, this thing is going one mile per hour from flat to flat. Oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot my helmet. Save yourselves! <laughs> Who's hearing this thing and going, huh? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so I've so got this, I've so got this, I've so got this, I've so got this. I don't know if I can do it, there he is. Here it comes, and look at it, here we go. <laughs> but what's ridiculous is you know the reason they've had to put this announcement up is because in the past, some idiot <laughs> has actually injured himself. I reckon he was just standing there going, dick. Dick, 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 I would. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a show host, thank you, thank you. Show host, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Fantastic. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if it isn't Nick Knowles. Nick Knowles! Sending out an SOS! Nick Knowles wasn't going to be here tonight, but he's staying in my hotel. And you've been working in the... I say working in the bar, you don't work in the bar. You've been writing in the bar. And um, I just went over to Nick Knowles last night and said, Nick, will you come to my show? And he said, will you promise, please promise me, that you won't talk to me and take the piss out of me? <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kidding. Um, now, Nick, you've been living in Bristol? Uh, I'm in the hotel. You live in the hotel? <laughs> How long have you been living in the hotel, Nick? Uh, on and off for about four years. <laughs> Nick, I hope you can feel from the reaction of the audience that this isn't a normal way to live your life. So, you used to do up homes. That's what you do, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, one of the things I do is, well, I'd stand and watch other people do up homes, that's what I do. Yeah. And you've just like, I will not take my work home with me. <laughs> I'm going to live in a hotel. <laughs> do they know you're there? <laughs> do you just stay in the bar? Do you hide? <laughs> is it like when people don't pay for train tickets, they just stay in the loo? It's like when the ticket inspector comes... <laughs> <laughs> I like ticket inspectors. 
because they, they, they know how to walk on trains because they, they, they do it for a living. Because we don't know. We walk down a train and we're falling. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. But ticket inspectors, they're amazing. They move with the train. Keep your front on, Kasta. This man is going from strength to strength. He's going to be a star. Let's find out why. Mr. Hal Crandon is here, ladies and gentlemen. Hal Crandon! Ah. ah, lovely to be here in Bristol on, on Michael's show, Michael McIntyre's show. I, I love Michael, I do, because like me, he's married with kids, and like me, he's... He's really quite camp, isn't he? Um, <laughs> am I camper? Yeah. Oh, and he skips and shit. I mean... <laughs> oh. Anyway, I am, uh, I am married. I've been married ten years now. Ten years. Uh, two kids. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're incredibly unhappy. Um, <laughs> we married too soon. We only knew each other five and a half months. That was the gap between meeting and marrying. People say you just know, and we just knew. She was pregnant. And... <laughs> I didn't enjoy my wedding day. Most men don't. Most men pretend they do, but most wedding days become the bride's day. Don't they? It's her day. I don't want to piss off the women here, but it's not your day. It's two people's day, OK? There's a man involved, OK? You look at a traditional wedding reception, all the jokes, all the speeches take the piss out the groom. No one's allowed to take the piss out the bride, are they? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Not on her special day. <laughs> Who's wearing fancy dress, pretending to be a virgin all day? No, she's a special flower. <laughs> and women get given away. Women are still given away on their wedding day. That's an incredibly offensive tradition. It's about women being possessions. It reinforces that viewpoint of women as fragile, unable to look after themselves. If anybody is fragile and unable to look after themselves in the modern world, yeah? It's surely men, isn't it? <laughs> we should be given away by our mums, shouldn't we? <laughs> we should be dragged down the aisle by the ear. Bloody come in, come on! <laughs> you got clean pants on, come on! <laughs> I have two kids, as I said, I've got two lovely girls. Do you know what? I'm too self-obsessed to be a good dad. Too about me. Little Martha, my oldest, comes home from school. She's like, Daddy, today we learned about butterflies and Miss Martha. I'm going, Martha. <laughs> you haven't even asked about my day. <laughs> That's a little bit selfish, isn't it? <laughs> little Grace, my little one, comes into our room at night, going, Daddy, I can't sleep. I had a bad dream about a witch. I take her into my office. I say, do you know what, Grace, that witch, yeah, she's not real, OK? But look at those debts there, yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at that bill. That bill's not been paid, no. <laughs> Can you find a pension plan on this desk, Grace? <laughs> yeah? Look for a pension plan? No, I don't bloody have one. How do you think I sleep at night? <laughs> thank you very much. You've been an absolute delight, Bristol. I've been House Rundle. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Well done. Well done, ladies and gentlemen! Wonderful. We love House Rundle.